Ravi Varma. I am a Scrum.org professional Scrum trainer and I am the founder and org whisperer at Smooth Apps. Today I want to talk about something uh, related to self-organization on Scrum teams. And I want to talk about a skill that I am awesome at and I bet you are not as good at it as I am and I call it S-S-O-W-O-P-O-P-A and I'll explain what that is. Uh, but first I want to travel back in time. I want to talk about uh, the professional scrum master class that I attended with Ken Schwaber. He was my trainer. This was in uh, scrum.org headquarters in Boston many years ago. And as Ken was explaining the fundamentals of scrum, uh, he was talking about self-organization. And there was uh, one of our classmates uh, probably spoke on behalf of many of us. Um, he was in management. And one of the concerns that he raised was Scrum is about self-organization, but where is the accountability? The fear was that uh, many people, myself included, may have noticed that developers or development team members uh, sometimes don't hold each other accountable. Maybe sometimes they don't hold themselves accountable. Uh, and I think this applies not only to developers, but to human beings in general. So th I think the unspoken concern was if you take off, take out the management driven accountability and you leave it to the uh, scrum team to hold each other accountable, how might that work? One of the things that uh, Ken mentioned in that training was scrum relies on peer accountability and ruthless peer to peer transparency. And the daily scrum is one of many ways in which uh, scrum creates a very powerful flashlight that exposes the good, bad, ugly within a scrum team. In that environment of uh, transparency, uh, it's very hard for developers who are not exhibiting the scrum values, who are behaving in a way that is not aligned with the team's goals. It's very hard for developers to hide uh, and to escape the scrutiny of their peers. So what, what Ken was telling us was, in Scrum, under the ruthless glare of that spotlight, uh, usually in effective, healthy professional Scrum, a couple of things happen. Out of professional pride, developers who are behaving in a way that is misaligned with Scrum values and who are not honoring uh, the team goals, they will either upgrade their performance or under the relentless accountability from their peers, uh, under the pressure of that accountability, they will either upgrade their performance or they will just work themselves out of the team and say, you know what, this is just not aligned. So um, I think I could sense the concerns that might have gone through that person's mind and my mind as well. What if developers hesitate to hold themselves and each other accountable? What happens then? And this is why where I will introduce the skill that I have mastered, which is called SSO without POPA. And what that means is selective self-organization without personal or peer accountability. So let me tell you why I'm an expert at this skill. Uh, as a developer, I have been guilty of selectively adopting those elements of Scrum that suit me and selectively ignoring those elements of Scrum that make me uncomfortable. So for instance, um, being an introverted developer, I feel awkward in having hard conversations with my colleagues who may be knowingly or unknowingly doing something that I perceive to violate Scrum values or I perceive may have an uh, undesirable effect on the team goals. But here's the unhealthy or unhelpful behavior I engage in. Many times I will go and complain about that colleague of mine to anybody and everybody who gives me a sympathetic ear except the one person who can make who can address my concern which is the person with whom I have a problem uh, also there are times when I will not look in the mirror and see wait a minute are there situations where I myself am not staying true to the scrum values where I am behaving in a way that hurts the team goals so this is how I am exhibiting selective self-organization without personal or peer accountability. I'm not looking in the mirror to hold myself accountable. And when I feel that a colleague of mine, a team member of mine is violating the values, our agreement or the team goals, I'm not talking to them. 
I'm cherry picking those aspects of Scrum that I love, which is um, nobody tells the dev team how much work they are going to do in the upcoming sprint. The dev team owns the sprint backlog. Uh, and if the product owner, let's say, own, uh, nails down the scope, uh, or then the dev team has the autonomy to, uh, to decide the date. Or if the product owner decides the date, then the dev team has the autonomy to decide the scope or the backlog items. That part I really love because it gives me power. However, the other leg of the stool is now I've got to hold myself to a higher standard. I've got to hold my colleagues to a higher standard. And then when they are behaving in a way which, is, which I feel is misaligned, I need to have hard conversations. That I have a tendency to not do. So what is the call to action here? Number one, if you are a member of a scrum team and you are watching this video, I would like you to look in the mirror and ask yourself, are you holding yourself to the highest standards of ethics, professionalism, and the culture of scrum values? And are you constantly inspecting, are you behaving in a way that is in alignment with the letter and the spirit of scrum in service of your shared team goal? That's action one. Action two is if you have a concern with a colleague of yours or a scrum team member, fellow scrum team member who you feel is violating your agreements, violating empiricism, ethics, scrum values, or behaving in a way that is misaligned with the scrum team goals, can you go for a walk, a cup of tea, a coffee, juice, beer? Can you have a direct one-on-one -on -one, courageous and com uh, compassionate conversation with that person? And then can, when appropriate, can you also have courageous and you know, compassionate conversations uh, in your retrospective, in your daily scrum, so that you bring it all out in the open and together figure out as a team what you're gonna do better. If we do not do that, we will lose the faith of our stakeholders and they will, we might reinforce their mental model that developers cannot be trusted, they are not capable of self-organizing and we may lose that opportunity that they have given to us. So the pendulum, which has swung to you know, the direction of self-organization, if we betray that ideal, it might swing all the way back where management might feel, these people are incapable, we gave them a chance, they squandered it, okay, let's go back to command and control, let's tell them what to do. So uh, I hope that you found this useful, I hope that you will generate some insights based on this video. And then I hope that you will not become like me, uh, a champion at selective self-organization without personal or peer accountability. Uh, and then together, we can improve the way in which we are implementing and adopting Scrum in service of our team goals and our organizational goals. I hope you found this useful. Thank you. Keep calm and Scrum on.